what's up okay we're back with another tutorial this one is gonna jump off of this beautiful visual that i made for sora um i realized it's complex but simple at the same time and when you compare the when you bring those two together you get something that's pretty cool people will be like what is even going on how they do that that's really cool um and i want to break it down for you guys in about five simple steps so let's dive in and start off with the first one so now that you're in blender <clears throat> i'm just gonna move myself around just so i don't block any of your views here the first thing i like to do is you have to bring in uh your svg so it starts off with your logo i'm gonna go ahead and kind of just show you what you need to do you need to make sure that you have the svg import so you go within the blender preferences and the add-ons if you just type in svg you'll get this like import svg uh, extension now after that's done you go to the import and then the scalable vector graphics once you import that so once you have your logo in the second thing you're going to want to do here is set up your camera <clears throat> the way i like to set up my camera is i'll hold down tilde go to the front view press shift a bring in your camera I'll use my mouse wheel to just move around, grab the camera, move it on the y-axis. From here is where I like to bring in that vertical split. So I can kind of always have a view. I uh, will do it, we'll do it all in 16 by 9, just in case you're setting up for a venue or something like that. And towards the end, I can show for my social media friendly friends here how you can get it in Instagram Reels or TikTok preference. So you grab it, I grab it on the y-axis. I'll move it on the Z a little bit just to center it. And so, so I'll move a little bit further back. You want to give yourself a little more space. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on my camera composition, guys, just so I can kind of see what's going on in terms of the composition. And once I have it kind of set up, now we have a frame to work with here. So the second thing, <clears throat> third thing in this tutorial is setting up those those circles that are going around the logo um and this is all done with geometry nodes so don't fear i know geometry nodes scares me personally but every time i do the tutorials and i come out of it i'm like that wasn't that bad so <clears throat> shout out ducky 3d he is the one who kind of created this element so what you do you start off with a plane i'm gonna call it go ahead and call it the geometry node one I'm going to get overcomplicated here. Open up your geometry nodes. We can go ahead and right click and just join this area. You don't need to see everything. And, and we're going to click new. Set up our geometry nodes. So for the geometry nodes, I deleted uh, that kind of first setup. But we're just going to start with an icosphere. And if you connect that, you'll see directly we got some moving on here. And then we're going to go ahead and bring in a random value. Change that random value from float to boolean. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and separate the geometry. Connect those two. Okay, okay. And then we're going to bring back and join. Oops. I want to join the geometry. Don't mind the fact that that just got deleted. We're just going to bring that connect. Oops. I'm going to connect these two again. I'm going to subdivide this mesh. Connect that there. Connect that here. And you'll kind of start to see the beginnings of the grand journey you'll have with this 3D. Triangulate. On that. Then... Hang in there, hang in there. Dual mesh. You can see a bit more is going on here now. And transform the geometry. And then last but not least, put the geometry nodes set in the material. We'll come back to the material. Think about this is how we'll make it metal. Now in your modifiers tab, we're going to go ahead and bring in starting off with a wireframe. 
See that? Now it's starting to look a bit more realistic, or not realistic, but closer to the final product. From here, you could make like a really cool like hex kind of thing. Bring in a subdivision. It's getting prettier. That wireframe. Also, don't be afraid to bump up the thickness a little bit. I don't. I hold down shift. I can make sure you bring in that boundary as well. And I'll go ahead and put mine on too, because my computer is a little, it's a little juiced, but not as juiced as some people's. Bring in a simple deform. You can bend it to get some real creative angles. I'll bend mine just a little bit, but that's it for me. Go ahead and bend it on the Z axis. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> then bring in one last subdivision. That last subdivision is going to make. Just gonna bring it all together. Look at that. It's looking quite crazy. So you can kind of see here we have the shape. What I like to do now is I'll just minimize these. I'll click on my geometry nodes actually. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, how do I add more of this thing? This is gonna be all in this random value for the Boolean. So what I like to do for that first one is I'll just kind of make it right about there and i think you play with the seed and you can just see kind of like where it lives i think this one's a bit this one's kind of creative because it starts off and it doesn't really show the full logo but the minute it starts animating it's gonna be kind of fun so you can tell your geometry nodes something because we're gonna have to create separate ones for each of these so i'm gonna do geometry nodes one and now let's go back to layout and you'll see since it was on that plane when you rotate it on the the Z axis, you rotate it on the Y axis. We're still just center, center focused here. So what I'm going to do for that first frame is just I'm gonna zero this out. For that first frame with the Z, I'm just going to kind of move it somewhere where that logo is still being shown. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to start with just animating um, a few of these geometry nodes. We're going to duplicate it by pressing shift D and then so press S and then what we'll do with our geometry nodes is we'll go ahead and copy the geometry node group so we have a new set from here sometimes I'll go ahead and just because we're not really animating much right now let's go to geometry node editor so now we have two of these geometry nodes you can see here we have geometry nodes one and geometry nodes two I mean one you know what I'm saying. We can up the probability a little bit. I can make it a little bit more random. Sorry about that. I'm going to start that one over here. Another one of these bad boys. Make it a lot bigger. And kind of bring it over here. So we can mess the probability something like a big fucking shape so when it moves you can get a lot of that light contrast okay now now that we have all our geometry nodes set up let's go back in the timeline let's make sure these are all named properly and let's just now we're going to start doing some fun animation stuff this is a big part of it so let's strap it so I'm going to go ahead and just keep my layout like this. And we're going to start with this first one. We're going to want it to just pretty much loop. So <clears throat> the way I go about looping things most of the time is I'll just animate one of these axes by 360. So let's just do the HSC little keyframe on the Z. And if you hold down shift and press the arrow key to the right, it'll take you to the last frame. And I'll do this negative, I'll do negative uh, 720, which is two 360 loops. So let me go in kind of fast. And then we look at that. Now let's go ahead and also let's do the Y axis. Oh, let's do the, the X up like, let's do the Y. So we're going to insert that. And we're going to do this one. Plus 720 as well. Now the animation's a bit more, it has some flavor to it, you know? It doesn't just look kind of funky. I'm gonna do the same for the other two. Wow, 
Wow, now look at that. When, you start, when we start adding the depth of field and the colors and everything, everything is going to start feeling nice and fun. Let's do the camera one. Let's get the hard. Let's try to get the hardest stuff out of the way first here. So hang in tight with me. I'm just going to call this camera one just because sometimes you never know. You may mess around and add another camera. So this is going to be a bit juicy. We're going to go ahead. Damn, I'm going to make a new collection. I'm going to call this camera animation one. I'm just going to color it pink. I'm going to bring my camera in here. Now that we've reached this point, we have to bring in a Bezier circle. So let's bring in this Bezier circle. I mean, it's just a regular ass circle. Sorry. Am I tripping? I'm tweaking, guys. Um, <clears throat> rotate it 90 degrees. And then what you kind of wanted to do is match exactly where this camera is in a sense. So actually don't listen to that. I'm just going to move. I just rotate it 90 degrees and I scaled it up. And then I'm going to do this like this. That's cursor to active. Let me go selection the cursor. Bring that camera right there. Then what we'll do is take our camera, add the constraint. Follow path. That's your circle. And it looks like, let's just make sure we do, oops, shift A, scale. I'm going to apply the scale to that Bezier circle. This is Z, forward axis. Oops. Let's just look at what's going on here. So it looks like, I don't have the animation we want. Let's move it a little bit closer. What the flip? <clears throat> so what I pretty much did, if you're when you were watching, was. I brought in a Bezier circle. I scaled it up. And I made it pretty much like the same arc in terms of the like big circle. And then I connected my camera to this Bezier circle. And the way I did that pretty much was I, I brought in the Bezier circle. Then I pressed tab and entered edit mode. Select one of the corners, this guy. Shift S, cursor to active, right? which brings that cursor, then you select your camera, shift S, selection of cursor, which brings the camera directly to that cursor. You need it to be on the same like axis. And then what I'll do <clears throat> now, continuing on, is I'll rotate the camera. And we'll rotate the camera and get it 90 degrees. It could be negative 90, I think it could be positive 90. Nope, it's gotta be negative 90. This will probably be different for you. And now we have our camera right here. So what I did, to make a really interesting intro animation was, I think I just went. What you'll do is insert that keyframe. Let's just put it 20. Let's bring it right here. Insert that. And make this a little more interesting that camera let's bring in a empty and let's make that empty right around our logo just because what it'll do is we can track it so target let me go back to our camera constraint track to target now you see camera it's flying in and you can do anything pretty cool with this now in terms of so what i did next was our camera animation 
That made it a lot quicker. And I'm gonna introduce the graph animation, the graph editor for all y'all right now. So <clears throat> we have it coming in. Boom, right? Boom. Actually, this is gonna be a little different than <clears throat> what I've done for Sora. What I did for Sora was I had the logo being tracked. The logo was all the way at the top and it came crashing in. So we're gonna do something a little different for tutorial. <clears throat> so we have our offset path. We're gonna just go ahead and select these two. Right click. I'm gonna create them into a bezier. And then what I did was I pretty much made this one bounce. Let's see if we can make it elastic. Let's see what happens when it. Okay, so it's looking okay. Give it a little more juice. Let's go from like can clean some of it up with its speed. It's a keyframe. Now it's just gonna okay. And what we'll do now. <clears throat> Let's go back. Let's go back to our timeline. <clears throat> With motion blur and everything, that's gonna look Chris. Trust me, trust me, trust me, please. All right, we did bounce. Let's do bounce instead. So you select these two, right click, bounce. Okay. Let's go back to our timeline. So we finished the camera flying, the objects moving, and now the other part is like turning an object on and off, right? So it's that it's that transition state. So it's like the music's coming and boom, 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 like the, the object's moving, it's moving. Where do you turn it off? Me personally, I think somewhere where we have a lot of coverage. So we don't want to do it right at the start, but somewhere like Right, like around like, uh, like here feels good. It's like a few seconds are coming through. It's moving, it's moving. Boom, right around like a hundred. I think I'm gonna leave this up for you and your timing on like music. I haven't found any, I didn't pick any music yet for this. So I'm just like free gunning it. So what are you gonna do for the logo? Now it is a mesh. Now when I click visibility, I select this viewport display. Oops. Show on viewports, off, renders. Okay. What we're going to do is keyframe this viewport on and off. And this is in the object properties and visibility. So what I'll do is I'll just at the start keyframe in. It being on, then right about that moment, I think I said around the ear somewhere. It's right there. And keyframe that off. And you see, it just turns off. There is no like easing or anything like that, it's just off. <clears throat> and then what we do now is our second object. I've imported mine ahead of time. It's a symbol. We're gonna do the reverse first. We're gonna make sure, just make sure everything is still, it's just kind of like set up <clears throat> in terms of uh, the size and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe this one off. Insert keyframe right around when it turns off here. I'm gonna keyframe this one in. That's it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the render tab. Sorry, I almost forgot that. Let's just go ahead and do the same thing for the right, Tuesday logo. That's off. Off. 
So now, boom, 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 boom. Off. And don't worry, we're going to get this with some clean animation. So let's just get on to that animation next. So I'm actually going to make my thing a little bit bigger, a little more juicy. Okay. So what I'll do with my animation now, I got this empty that's con kind of controlling the logo. Is well, I like to just play around with it. We're not really like fully, fully looping this. So from here, I'll probably bring in a little bit of rotation on the Z axis. So that's just single keyframe. So we're probably going to want it rotating from the start. Let's see what that looks like. And then let's just rotate it all the way this way. And then let's go over here and make it like negative 20 so we can get it all the way on the other end. Let's see what that looks like. And let's insert another keyframe right here. Sorry, this is a bit more of like an advanced tutorial. I realized I couldn't, I didn't really break this one down. Let's not do that on the Y axis, actually. So I'm going to delete this single keyframe. Single keyframe on the X. Um, the way I'm jumping between keyframes is up and down on the directional keys. I'm just going to move it back a little bit. That's the next one. Move it. Just move it a little bit forward. Next one. Uh, we want it to be going straight into that rotation. So what I would probably do now. I think it's good enough. Uh, okay. We're probably going to have to let's go ahead and take the graph editor here. Sorry, I am making you guys jump through hoops here, but this is what animation is like sometimes. You're just, quite frankly, playing around with this stuff. Our Z animation. I'm going to go ahead and that's our... I'm going to make these all busy. Just because I think it should be a lot smoother. And we'll take these two. And just kind of broaden it out a little bit. Remember with our X. Oops. Select all our X axis. Can we actually just select... Nah, you can't. That'd have been cool. I'm sure there's a way. I just don't know it right now. Put the X, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Just going to drag it out a little bit. Just feel for it. And then right where that transitions. We're going to have it flip. So. Looks like we got to do a little more work here. For the animation. For what it flips. Uh, let's go back to this graph editor. Because at this certain point. All those keyframes are just seeing nothing but keyframes. And you're like what the fuck is going on. We're going to have this. So it's looking at. Let's not bother with our. Let's not bother with our X axis. And our Z. This one's going from. It's like. And the, what we'll probably do here. Is bring this a little bit closer. And then. Take this. Minus. 360.
and then we'll have it. It's getting kind of crazy. What the freak? Okay. This one is 360. So I'll have it kind of end a little bit further. And as that's flipping, now it's going to... And then we're going to make this one flip kind of at the same-ish time. And this might be my longest tutorial ever. But you're seeing literally from start to finish how much work it takes. And I'll try my best to edit some of the stuff out. But some of this, I just, either we're going to have to request someone else on YouTube to do it. Or I might have to just give it my best. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to do it. Carry perfect. Even the video. Okay. The second thing is our symbol. So, right, just, so that's rotating. Where is that? Is that rotating negative 360? Uh, so we're going to rotate it on the same axis. So let's see. Can we, we can put in a marker here. One of these things. Let's put in a marker. Set a marker right here so we know. Let's rename this call it flip. And then what I do is let's select this again. So we'll just see where our Quiet Tuesday starts. Uh, marker. And then we go back to our symbol. And we don't have any sort of mechanics here. So we enter the keyframe there, go to flip. Negative 360 as well. Now we have this little rotation. Gonna make that busier. Hmm, it looks like it's ending the exact same time. We don't want it to end the exact same time. So we're gonna have it continue, so it's gonna go. Fuck. It's not looking great. <clears throat> Let's make that. Let's delete this. Let's make this actually negative 720. And let's see what that plays out like. Nice, 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 nice. Negative 720. Now we're going from 360 to negative 720. Cool. Okay. Now we need to add a little bit of some oomph to this animation. So I'll have it go from 720 and then maybe have it just like move there to like here to like back here. And then let's have this. Wait, what does it look like on the Y axis? Oh, I can make this kind of fun. Because it's a pretty cool shape. Let's make this one kind of fun. So, with our Y axis. We can just make it rotate. So let's have it rotating 360 times four. Four rotations. So this is gonna rotate. Quiet Tuesday. 
spins. This shit's spinning. It's looking cool. It's looking cool. Spinning a little too much. The spinning's a little too much. Okay. Let's take this single key frame. And then um, maybe we can just have it. What we'll have the camera do again is probably right around here. We'll just make the camera. So let's go back on our constraints. So you see. So let's just insert a keyframe. Uh, in 300, we're just going to have it. Do we actually just have it go back to what it was? Maybe we can have it go back to what it was, like times two. So, go here. Let's insert that. See what that's like. Oh, that's kind of cool. So now it's just like, boom, boom. It's just gonna, and it just rotates and it goes again. Okay, so let's fuck with the lighting now. So let's close these. Let's get it all set up. Let's mess with our lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and switch from Eevee to Cycles. This is when I, I did this one in Cycles, so it will work in Eevee, but in Cycles, I think this is the one I liked because of all the, like, the reflections and the, the way I can mess with the light. I'll mess with Motion Blur later. So I got our lighting. Let's just open this up in Render Mode. So the samples, 1,000. You must be crazy. We don't need 1,000 samples. Let's turn the strength down. What color shall we use here? Blue? White? White is kind of cool. I'll fuck around with this later. But first things first, we're going to bring in a light. I did shift A. Bring this bad boy up. And I'm like, I'll do like a bit of like a three point kind of light kind of thing here. I'm gonna, spread, I'm gonna take the spread way down. I'm gonna pump it up. 200 maybe. 400. One thing I just learned is just making duplicates by doing Alt-D instead, because I think it takes less resources. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just like, yeah, I'll make this one all white. Kind of feeling kind of, kind of, that wasn't a duplicate. Let's bring that up. We got one on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here. Just kind of point it in. Now for the metal material, I'm just gonna go ahead and use handy dandy asset, but I'll show you how to make a very simple metal material right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a shader editor. I'm gonna hide that I press like N. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Quiet Tuesday logo because yeah. Press this plus icon. New. If it's not applying, just press Shift A. Sign. Bring the metallic all the way up. Roughness. You can decide to bring it down, but you don't want to bring it too far down. So then you kind of just lose a bit of that element. When it's too far down on the all black background, you're just seeing complete reflections, and you want a little bit of roughness, just a little bit, not too much. Yeah, probably just play with this, actually. I'm not going to go that crazy with the metal material. I'm just going to call this metal. And then we have to go back into our geometry nodes. Metal. Metal. Select each one.
I guess they're all okay. Yeah, they all met off. Now you can kind of see here. This shit's blooming. Oh, it's, it's a shading. Can we do shades sort of? Ah, whatever. And honestly, with the lighting, I suggest you, quite frankly, play around with it. Sometimes you could add a little bit. Let's just keep adding. Don't go too crazy, but you also want your shit to show. Play with colors. Like, this starts to look really cool. I like to, I like to stay in this kind of zone when it comes down to colors, but well, let's make it tinge blue. Not perfect, but just a tinge. The glare will really cook for us, I feel. This thing subdividing. Why does it not feel like smooth? Uh, we'll leave it alone. Just render what we need to see. Oh shit. Now we need the material on this bad boy. There's a million in the world. Now we're moving into the motion blur portion. So this one is completely up to you. So what I like to do to test motion blur is I'm going to my compositor, shift A, viewer. I have this one and I won't really touch anything besides that. And what I'll do is just render out a still image. And you just wanna see how far that motion blur is going. That's looking fucking clean, actually. Holy fuck. I gotta take a picture, sorry. Okay. This is looking pretty clean, actually, gamers. Okay. We got everything kind of set up now. We got, we got some light movement here. You could always add extra elements, circles. Just random stuff. You can go back in, add some more flair to it all. Particles. I can make another tutorial on that. I don't want to overdo this one a lot too much. So, but what I like to do, what I'll recommend, is bring in a little bit of that glare. And I like to mess with the, you can add some bloom. And bring the threshold way up. So this one's going to be super bright. Turn up the quality. And then if I like render it at the scene. And with the bloom, you get that like those little just like glints. I'm going to play around with something that I purchased Chrome type. Shout out. Shout out them. They're really doing their thing out there. Here it is. <clears throat> this is it. You can add a little bit of denoise to get a little bit more love, but this is pretty much the whole tutorial. So thank you for hanging in. I don't know if I'll call this one tutorial or walkthrough or work along. Doesn't matter. We'll see how far I get in the editing, but hopefully um, there's something you could take from this. If it be a little trick that I did or if it just be a glance of inspiration, I appreciate you for being here and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.